Well, hello. Welcome to Coffee in the Word. Um, I'm having tech technological difficulties today. We're going to hope we get through this because it's actually my fourth time to, to start trying to record this. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Shield of Faith. It is the fourth in the tools or the, the pieces of armor that we've been talking about. We've talked about the Belt of Truth, the Breastplate of Righteousness, and the shoes of peace. And in just a few minutes, I'm going to be going to the church so we can move on to the to the uh, helmet of salvation. So I thought we'd better try to talk about the shield of faith today. Um, the verse that we're talking about is Ephesians 6, 16, in addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with, with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. So we know what a shield is, and I'm going to pull out my little picture in the back and show you that this is what the Roman soldier's shield looked like. It was a large piece of equipment. It was um, made of wood. It had, was covered with leather, and that leather could be soaked in water, and it, had, it was reinforced and had metal in the front of it. I think that thing's got to be awfully heavy. And um, it was something, if you notice the wording, um, and all the other previous pieces of armor or pieces of the uniform, actually, that Paul mentioned, he would say, um, having put these on. And those were considered part of the soldier's uniform that it the soldier would wear the, those things all the time, but obviously that big old heavy shield he's going to take up. He's going to he's going to take that when he goes into battle or maybe when he's going to practice. He's going to take it when he's got a purpose for it. And faith is something that we have to take up. If we are Christians, we have faith. We already have faith. We've put our faith in Jesus, or we wouldn't be Christians. Um, but sometimes we've got to take up that faith and use it in order to do what God has for us to do. Now, we need to start by kind of coming up with a definition of, of what faith is. So stop and think for a minute. What is faith? Maybe some of you would be able to quote uh, some kind of scripture. Um, but I think really what a lot of people when they say, boy, I just don't have very much faith. And I've heard people say that. And I think that they mean, I don't feel very confident. And I think that some people get the erroneous impression that having much faith means that you are confident all the time. You're never afraid. You're bold. You just go right into any situation. You don't stop and think. And that is not what faith is. As a matter of fact, um, it's not a feeling at all. You can have absolute faith and be quaking in your boots, but faith is an action. When God gives you something to do, when you know what is the right thing to do, and you do it even though you're scared out of your mind, that's faith because you are doing what God tells you to do. You've heard the illustration of the chair, that you can believe a chair will hold you up and you can have every confidence in it, but until you actually sit down, you haven't put your faith in that chair. When um, we were kids, we all played that do you trust me game where you fall backwards and somebody has to catch you and you had to have faith in that person to commit yourself to falling backwards. Uh, probably a few people have been dropped that way. The verse most people think of is Hebrews 11, 1, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it from the NIV version. Now, faith is being sure about what we hope for and certain of what we do not feel. Um, when we were asked to define this at the beginning of the study, I said it's an action. It's not something that you, you just, it, it's not just a feeling. It's something that you, uh, it's something that you do. Uh, Dr. Tony Evans has another uh, illustration for it. He says, 
faith is acting like it is so, even when it is not so, so that it may be so, because God said so. And the definition that was in this book that I liked really well, it's, it's just that faith is acting like God's telling the truth. And we know that he is. Um, so you can't have faith unless you have obedience. If, if God is telling you to do something or telling you not to do something and you're not obedient, you're not really putting your faith in what he says. You're not really trusting that what he says is really true and that he'll stand with you. Uh, faith gives us lots of benefits. And the benefit to the soldier was it stopped the assault of what was coming toward them. Um, might have been a spear, might have been a javelin, but it mentions arrows. And it particularly mentions fiery arrows. And that was because the um, warriors at that time would take those arrows and they would dip them in something that was flammable and then light them and then shoot them, uh, kind of like the Indians did to the covered wagon. And you know what happened then? It wasn't so much that the it wasn't so much that the the Indians would shoot at the covered wagons and and burn people up with those with those arrows that were on fire, but they set the wagon on fire. And then everybody's trying to put out the fire in the wagon because that's got all their stuff in it. And then the Indians could come in. We've seen that on all the old TV shows. Um, so this is pretty much what they did. The, the flaming arrows were really more of a distraction than anything else. And the arrows that Satan uses, our enemy uses for us, can be all kinds of things. They can be something that is what we consider even just kind of part of our personality. You know, if you're if you're a naturally timid person, then you may say, you know, uncertainty, insecurity, timidity, fear. Those are just part of me. That's just how God made me. But that can be one of the arrows that Satan uses. Even though you may be naturally inclined to that, he can use that to dissuade you from doing what he's asked you to do. It can be circumstances that are way beyond your control. Bad things do happen to us. And when they do, they cause stress. You know, there are illnesses, there's loss, there's financial loss, there's, you know, all kinds of hardships can happen to us. And those are ways that Satan can take our eyes off Jesus and off what his purposes for us are. The darts can be. Uh, something that maybe we've done in our past that we maybe had control of at the time, but now uh, we're past it, but there are effects from that. Maybe it's guilt. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's a feeling of hopelessness because of something that um, that we've been a part of in the past, and it just keeps coming back toward us. Satan can use those things. It can be that somebody has done something to you, maybe an intentional attack, maybe an unintentional attack, maybe a betrayal. Um, so your response might be anger or jealousy or even hatred. And, and that's something that Satan uses to distract you from your mission. But whatever the fiery darts are, faith can overcome it. But there's a trick to that because our faith has to be in the right thing. And of course, that means it has to be based on truth. And truth means God's truth. So um, there are tragic examples of people that have put their absolute faith in something that was not true. Think of the Jim Jones, um, and I don't remember the name of his his group, but all those people that put their absolute faith in what Jim Jones said. And of course, he led them to their death. And he's just one example, happens to be one that I can remember when it happened. But there have been many others like that. There were, you know, the Heaven's Gate and, and, and various other cult groups. It doesn't have to be a cult group. It can just be anything um, that's foolish 
that you let yourself be led into. And I will tell you a secret, and that is that Satan will sometimes disguise himself as God's truth in your life if you don't take the time to really examine what the Word of God says. And if you don't pray about it and maybe seek some godly counsel about um, whether or not the action that you're about to take is really what God has for you or whether it's something that you might want or somebody else might want for you that you step into foolishly. Faith is not foolishness. Faith is, is got to be based on firmness in the word of God. And so if you are, uh, if you are feeling like you're about to put your faith in something that seems contrary to God's word in any way, in any way at all, then you need to have second thoughts. Uh, we have faith. We've just got to activate it. And uh, we can do that. And my faith is no stronger than your faith. And your faith is no stronger than somebody else's faith. Um, it's, it's something that God has blessed us with. It's a gift from God. And he's there with us. And all we've got to do is just believe, believe, let him guide us. And then once he's guided us, we've just got to trust that he knows what he's doing. And he does. So let's pray. Lord, we just thank you that you've given us the gift of faith. We ask you to guide us so that we would know your truth and that we would uh, then act as if you are telling the truth, Lord, because we know that you absolutely are and move forward in faith toward whatever you are telling us to do, whatever direction that you would have us go. Help us to be obedient. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.